Hey everyone, I'm Marie Life Coach here. So I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas and you're going to look forward to an even better new year. So 2018 is going to be the year where we have balance in our lives, where we watch everything grow that we've planted. There have been some major developments in my um, career over the last year, in fact over the last couple of months with the birth of the Soul Awakening Academy. And within the Soul Awakening Academy, there are going to be some amazing collaborations with different people. And what I'm going to be offering you is a fantastic blend of traditional coaching, positive psychology combined with spiritual and transpersonal coaching. And alongside that, we will be offering new revolutionary healing modalities as well so all will be revealed but if you haven't signed up to receive the prospectus i'll pop the link below so we just wanted to jump on video today and talk about um things that are kind of happening in the universe on an energetic plane so i get a this the biggest time of year where people start to contact me for coaching services and it's apparent that, you know, Christmas and New Year bring up some emotional issues for people and I totally understand that. In fact, I was having a bit of an emotional um, outpouring myself over the last couple of weeks, just feeling the need to release and cry and purge, really taking even deeper look at myself and my level of self-worth what I perceive about myself, what's holding me back, you know, what, what are my core wounds. Uh, so from an astrolo astrological point of view, or if you have your astrology chart done, you can see where you hold your core wound. So I obviously know where mine is and I was just reflecting on it. What does it mean? How can I, how can I tally that up with how my life has gone? You know, is it, do I really feel it or is it just something in the astrological chart that I can dismiss and no it's something that um, I can really put my finger on that I had been feeling and it was great for me because I was able to look at that wound and understand where it stemmed from so one of the reasons why we have these limiting beliefs is because at some point in our life, generally in early childhood, we have taken to some form of self-loathing. That may sound a little bit uh, dramatic, but on some level, we have turned against ourselves. So I know for me, at one point in my life, I literally looked in the mirror and said, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And I think I probably even hit myself in the face a few times as well. And from that moment on, I couldn't bear to look in the mirror at myself. And I took to despising myself, literally. And that then, you know, built, built up. The momentum built up from that. So my level of self-loathing ran really deeply. And it it's... It's, a, it's about taking yourself back. So literally mentally, through meditation, through creative visualization, it's tracking back, it's tracing back, it's asking your subconscious memory, your subconscious mind that stores all your memories to show you, to present to you in a gentle way, where did this wound, where did this limiting belief, where did this first take form to then become a reality for you? and just see what gets brought to mind. And if it did happen in early childhood, then it is about embracing the inner child. So that, that child of me, that part of me that, that I cut off and denied because I didn't like her, didn't want anything to do with her. She was the cause of all my problems. She was the one to blame. Well, how could I ever get away from her? I couldn't, but what I did was I cut her off. I did not give her the love that she needed at that time. So it is about um, embracing that inner child. It's about loving that inner child. And I know it sounds so cliche because the terms terminology can be overused these days, but unless you try it, then you don't know the power of it. Now I've tried it and it does work. A lot of the clients that I see 
their limiting beliefs are based on lack of self-worth equals lack of self-love. So it's a difficult, it's a, it's a very kind of untangible metaphor that people use when they say you must love yourself more and everybody goes yeah yeah I get it yeah I need to love myself more I don't oh, I don't love myself yeah and if you say to them well how, well, how? show me how I can love myself more <clears throat> it's really quite difficult for somebody to go okay well you just need to do xyz because we're all different and we all self-loathe let's say in many different ways we all self-sabotage and cut ourselves off from love in many many different ways so an idea i had when i was doing my kind of um my own self journey if you like to figure this out for myself is i imagined um i imagined drawing myself let's say on a canvas i would do it for you now but um it probably wouldn't work so I'd literally draw myself on a canvas or get a photograph of yourself and pin it up somewhere and i want you to look at yourself look at every tiny detail of your face your body if it's a picture your posture what are your eyes saying about you in that moment are they happy? Are they sad? It may bring back memories of how you actually felt in that time. And I want you to take a pen and I want you to mark off all the different areas of yourself that you don't love yourself. So it could be your nose, it could be your mouth, it could be your teeth, it could be your eyes, it could be your hair, it could be your, your shoulders, it could be your breasts, it could be your thighs, it could be your legs. All the different ways that you don't love yourself and you'll know you don't love yourself because you criticize these parts of you you self loathe you loathe these parts of you and how how do you know you do that because you tell it <laughs> every day that i don't like you you're not good enough i hate you even i need to change you i need to do something about that it's not acceptable so all these different parts of your body are taking that negativity and absorbing it and every cell in your body listens to what you say because everything you say every thought you have produces a chemical hormone which translates to the cells in the body which translates then to your DNA and then your DNA has an effect on your whole body on your well-being and then your reality gets created around your thoughts and your emotions and your beliefs so when you figured out all the different ways that you self-loathe, you can go even deeper. Well, why do I do this? When did this start? Who told me that this wasn't acceptable? And you'll have a whole, you know, chapter and verse on all the times you were told and all the times you believed that you weren't good enough in some way. And when you've figured that out and you've accepted it and you've sat with it for a little bit and you've, okay, you've acknowledged it, the next step is to transmute it. And I don't just mean, let it go, <laughs> get a magic wand and go, poof, it's gone. Okay, try it, that might work for you. But what works for me is I simply transmute. So awareness is the first key. You can only move to a position of power when you have awareness. So get the awareness first with whatever way works for you. I'm a very kind of visual person. So getting visual with it works for me and I do it through creative visualization. This is something that I teach. So it's really extremely powerful when you can hold a vision in your mind. Then I want you to completely change your self-talk. So the talk that you have at the minute, write it down, where you, where you self-loathe your body or the way that you act in the world, whatever it is that is your issue. It could be relationships, money, success. Just write it all down, the way that you talk to yourself. Then literally, this is about reframing how you talk to yourself. So for me, it was about then loving every part of me that I hated. Every behaviour 
in me that I turned against I needed to love and you do it by simply accepting yourself you lose the judgment that only you have about yourself. You let go of that negative, critical, self-loathing talk that you have towards certain parts of yourself. And you change them. It doesn't have to be to love at first. It can simply be changing it to acceptance. That is stop judging yourself. Have a go at this technique. If you need any help with it, then you know my email address is I am at amarielifecoach.com. But this is the first step to moving forward in your life. If you really want to change your life, you have to change the way you think about your life. And generally, the only person that's ever going to get in your way is you. And you need to get really clear about all the ways that you are getting in your way. So I hope this has helped guys. If you wanna train with me, you know I've got some courses starting in the new year. Check out the website at amarielifecoach.com where you'll find the Soul Awakening Academy. I look forward to seeing you on the new year.